there's no other. Glorify the name of God for the special opportunity we have to be blessed this evening again. This is your favorite program, Kingdom Life, coming to you from your inspirational station, Echo 89.7 FM. This program comes on the air from 8.05 to 8.35 every Sunday evening. I'm Jumi Adito Isho Lagunju, the minister on this program. With me in the studio tonight are my co-presenters. They are Sister Lua Fumilayo and Sister Unida Mola. Sister Unida Mola is a young adult. She is a teenager. Unida Mola, you are welcome to the program tonight. Good evening, listener. Thank you very much. Uh, with me as well is Sister Lua Fumilayo. You are welcome to the program tonight. Good evening, listener. Thank you very much. My dear listener out there, this program comes up every Sunday evening, as I said earlier on, by 8.05. I want to plead with you, please, Program this on your phone, on your handset. A reminder, or you set an alarm clock at home so that you won't miss this moment. By 8 o'clock, set the alarm. Few minutes after 8, we come on the air. You know the reason why I say so? Every time you tune to this program, there will be something unique, something wonderful, spectacular that Lord will be doing in your life. You will continue to be channels of blessings to others as you remind others as well to tune to this program and your life will be turned around positively. People will be coming to ask you, what is the secret of your success? What is the secret of your victory, of your blessings? And you'll be pointing them to our Lord Jesus Christ. Is this not based on any denomination? Whatever may be your denomination, whatever may be your faith, whoever you may be, as long as you are living you are hearing what you are saying. You are still on this earth. You are still alive. The Lord has you in mind. He loves you. He cares for you. That is the mindset, the belief you should be having every evening. That the Lord has something for me tonight. Personalize it. And great will be your testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the previous episode, we were looking at a series of messages on the power of praise. In the process of relaying the message, we use the opportunity to remind people that try as much as possible in your home, practicalize this, apply it, use every opportunity to praise God, to glorify God. Whatever may be your situation, no matter how challenging it may be, when you praise God, in every situation, you move God to take over every circumstances in your life. We look at the example of challenge the children of uh, Israel had, and that's when they were confronted by the wall of Jericho. And we highlighted there the two-pronged problem they had. It wasn't just the wall of Jericho that was standing in their way. It was even the wall of Jericho was surrounded by ditch, which was 27 feet wide by 10 feet deep. Enough to even swallow entire army. And if they should get into that position, it was a disadvantaged position. Enemies from the top of the wall would have just been hauling things down and be destroying them. But the Lord used one problem to solve the other problems in their life. Whatever situation you may be going through, whatever challenging situation you may be having, the Lord will use the solution of one to get rid of the other problem in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Lord will turn all those situations to wonderful advantages in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. We are always told that the wall of Jericho was leveled, became flat. But ordinarily, you bring a wall that is 17 feet high by 7 feet wide, you bring it down. The rubble alone will still be higher than the height of an average man. But what the Lord did was after leveling, the, bringing the wall down, the problem of scaling the wall now became a solution in filling the ditch that was surrounding the Jericho wall. So my dear listener out there, make it to be a habit. Maybe to be your style of praising God. 90% dominating with praises. 
praising our Heavenly Father, and you'll be leveling every mountain in your life. The one that are not moving, you'll be using them as a stepping stone to go to a higher level in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to believe you've been doing that. God bless you, my dear listener out there. For tonight, we are continuing the message on that special aspect that we mentioned, and some people were even trying to get even clarification from us on that victory that the children of Israel enjoyed while entering the Jericho when the wall came down before them and somebody was singled out. That was Rahab, the Alot, and not only was she singled out, she was saved and as many people in the family that came under the roof covered within the house where the scarlet was placed, they were all saved. And people were saying, wow, a Alot, somebody that was known for her notoriety in the skill, in the art she was having then, the Lord had compassion on her, the Lord saved her. Saved not just her alone, the entire family. And that was where we pointed out in the book of Matthew chapter 1 from verse 3 to 6. And that was the question a lot of people were asking. Let's look at this together from the book of Matthew chapter 1 from verse 3 to 6. And many people would have read this in the past without paying attention to it. That could be probably a non-Jew that would read that one and not be able to attribute or get any meaning from that. And that was where the mention was made of Rahab. Let's look at verse 5 instead. About Rahab, the Allot there. The Allot that was saved during the invasion of the Jericho. The Allot that was saved there ended up being in the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is this communicating to us? Let us continue. Let's read it together. Verse 5 first. Salmon begat Boaz by Rahab. Rahab begat Obed by Ruth. And Obed begat Jesse. Thank Jesse. you. Boaz by Rahab. And Boaz begot Obed by Ruth, and Obed begot Jesse. That is verse 5 of Matthew chapter 1. Who is the Rahab being referred to there? Depending on the version you are reading, some versions highlighted and put in bracket, Rahab the Alot. Rahab the Alot. And you might be wondering, why Rahab the Alot? Let's back up a little uh, Matthew chapter 1. Let's look at verse 3. Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez begat Ezron, and Ezron begat Ram. Ram begat Amnadab. Amnadab begat Nashon, and Nashon begat Samuel. Thank you. Now, that verse 3 says, Judah begat Perez and Zerah by Tamar. This is a loaded story. And what the Lord is telling you and I tonight is this. If your case is as terrible, as worse as that of Rahab, the alert, the prostitute, and you are now even feeling, will God still bless me? Will God still save me? Does he still love me? The Lord is saying, I love you. Irrespective of what you are going through, irrespective of what you have done in the past, he cares for you. It is not a license for you to say, continue to be lawless, continue to live in sin, to live a lawless life, but it's a message of grace that I care for you. If, humanly speaking, we are the one to choose who and who should be saved from the land of Jericho, Rahab, despite the fact that he was kind and he was nice to the spider that went there, we will not put her name. We will say, after all, she's not been living a life that is pleasing to God. She should pay for all the sins she has committed. But our God is not like that. In that place we read in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, from verse 3 there, mention was made about some people, which will take time tonight to explain. One name that stood out there first is that of Rahab, the Alot, which majority of people know. But many people could not even connect her to be the one that is in the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ. God's provision for the deliverance of the sinners and the outcasts through our Lord Jesus Christ is the message that is being communicated there. And that book of Matthew specifically was written and a, a kind of address to the Jew. And the emphasis was laid there about that genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ because of the pride of the Jew, because of the pride of the priests, the, the Sadducees, the Pharisees at that time that believed that, look, you can't enjoy blessing from God. After all, you are sinners. It's only we people that will continue to enjoy blessing. We are able to obey all the laws. They will count all the 613 laws. We are able to go through all this ritual. All these are religious activities. That is why we'll be blessed. And by the time the apostle was writing this, this letter to them, he highlighted the genealogy, the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ, mentioning their great-grandfather, their great-grandmother that were known for that reputation 
of being sinners. Incidentally, they have forgotten that God made them to be in the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ to communicate that message of salvation, the message of redemption, and the message of total deliverance for the people. My dear listener out there, this is the good news for you and I. Irrespective of your past, the Lord is saying, I love you. I care for you. God does not look at the past of a sinner or an outcast to determine his or her future. And for you and I tonight, my dear listener, the Lord is retreating and reminding you and reassuring you that he does not look at your past to determine your future. He says, the thoughts I have towards you are good and not evil to bring you a sure end. So my dear listener right there, I congratulate you for being part of this program tonight. In that place that we read in verse 3, let's look at it again. That verse 3 of Matthew chapter 1. Judah begat Perez and Zira by Tamar. Perez begat Estron. Thank you. We can get the story from the book of Genesis chapter 38, verse 24 to 27, and we read the part of 29 and verse 30. Let me just explain before we read there, before we read it. That genealogy indicated Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. The story there is Judah did something that is so terrible. I mean, something you would refer to as an abomination. He ended up going to patronize a prostitute. How dare? And when he went to patronize the prostitute, he did not know it was the wife of his son that died. He didn't know it was the wife of his son that pretended to be the prostitute. And after Judah went in, the lady became pregnant and had twins in her womb. When they told Judah that your son's uh, wife had the, the supposed to be a widow had gone into the act of prostitution and she has a child judah was the first to quote the law she has to be killed we must burn her according to the law and be destroyed to remove abomination from this land and the lady being smart at that time took some things from the person that patronized her judah had forgotten after some months and she said the owner of this pregnancy is the one that has all this emblem that i'm holding and Judah said, she's more righteous than me. She shouldn't be killed. My dear listener, Judah was the culprit, was the one that caused it. And the product of that terrible thing that Judah did ended up being Zerah and Perez. And anybody that does such a thing in the land of Israel, according to the law, should never be allowed to come in the midst of people. When those children are were bastard, they are bastard and they are not supposed to ever be even being reckoned with or to come to the presence of God. Not only that, the woman who did it is supposed to be killed and burnt immediately alive. So my dear listener, you are seeing the magnitude of the offense. And now God made us to even understand this now. Now with what Judah did, with the, what would have begotten our parents and Zerah, what happened? They ended up being in the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying, irrespective of your past, Jesus loves you. He made him to come through this knowledge for you and I to enjoy that special grace, that special redemption, coming back as children of God. Let's read this together so that you'll be able to connect to the story that is being mentioned in Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 1 from verse 3 to 6, verse 3 specifically, and where it is recorded in detail in Genesis chapter 38. Let's read a few verses, please. Verse 24. And it came to pass about three months after that Judah was told, saying, Tamar, your daughter-in-law, has played the harlot. Furthermore, she is with child by harlotry. So Judah said, Bring her out and let her be born. When she was brought out, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, by the man to whom this belong, I am with child. And she said, Please, determine those, this are the signet and cord and staff. So Judah acknowledged them and said, She has been more righteous than I, because I did not give her to Sheila my son. And he knew, and he never knew her again. Just pause a little there. When Judah was speaking, Judah did not come out openly to tell people, Ha, ah, I'm the cuprito. I'm the one that committed these sins. He tactically covered it. What she mentioned there was like, it's because I did not give her to be married to somebody else. Because of that, that is why she went into a lottery. She did not, he did not say, I'm the one that's guilty of this. See how human beings covered the bad things they have done. 
but the Lord sees everything and he still shows compassion. Maybe you are there, you are hiding something. The Lord is looking at you and he's saying, don't worry. I want you to turn back from that act, but come to me. I'm ready to accept you. The Lord is taking you and I somewhere tonight. Just a place of permanent resolution of the issues in your life. And for you to go and sin no more. Come to me. I love you. What the Lord, that's what the Lord is saying. And if you have any challenging situation in your life, is it any ailment? Is it any sickness? Whatever may be the issue, the Lord is saying, remove that guilt from your mind. Remove that weight, that load from your mind. Come to me tonight. There's going to be a positive turnaround in your earth in Jesus' name. Amen. In your business, there's going to be a positive turnaround in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever you are believing God for, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, tonight is a night of deliverance, a night of victory, a night of uncommon favor for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Continue reading, please. Start back off a little by one verse and continue reading. Verse 27. Now it came to pass, at the time for giving birth, that behold, twins were in her womb, and the first one was Perez, and the second one Zira. Thank you. Those twins, the product of the sinful act of Judah with their mother, Tamar, they were the one that ended up being in the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ. My dear listener, God loves you, He cares for you. He's retreating tonight that whatever you might have done, no man sees you. Nobody ever saw you when you were doing it. But he's saying, I love you. That is why Lord Jesus Christ came. And that is why you and I are having this victory. Let's look at that place in verse 20, in verse 5 again, where he said, Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab, the allot Boaz begot Obed by Ruth, and Obed begot Jesse. I want to mention Ruth there and see the connection and we'll be able to now look at a place in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 23. There we'll see how those things are connected. Let's look at the book of uh, Ruth. Oyinda Mala, please read for us a few verses in chapter Ruth. Ruth chapter 2, verse 2, and then a part in verse uh, chapter 4 as well. Continue reading, please. One day, Ruth the, the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go out into the, the harvest field to pick up the stalks of grain left behind by anyone who is kind enough to let me do it. Naomi replied, All right, my daughter, go ahead. Okay, now the place I want us to take note there is where it is stated that Ruth is a Moabite. And we can only connect to that when we look at the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23. Uh, from verse 3 to 6, there you see the people that have been marked as in people that you should have nothing to do with. People that you should never even reckon with in life. And what did God do? The Lord is saying, I'm here to reconcile everyone. To bring everyone back irrespective of what they have done. Let me just take it from here. Deuteronomy chapter 23. Verse 3, and when some people are saying somebody has offended me, I will never forgive the person, even for life, till even whatever may happen, I will never forgive. The Lord is saying there's nothing like never, never. The Lord is saying even the people that they always refer to in the Old Testament, as in God said they should never have anything to do with you, they should never come in, into your midst forever, the Lord is saying I love them. I've run them back unto me, and I'm ready to reinstate them. And that was why our Lord Jesus Christ came through the lineage of Ruth, the Moabite, to tell you no one should ever be ostracized permanently. And you say, I will never take them back. Let's look at this together from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 3 to verse 6. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter in the assembly of the, of, of the Lord. Okay, continue reading. Even to the tenth generation... None of his descendants shall enter the assembly of the Lord forever. Are you hearing that? He's saying a Moabite shall never enter into the assembly of the Lord. So if you have anything you are pointing to there, the Lord made sure that Ruth, who happened to be a Moabite, as we the Mola read there, pointed it out, continue, I mean, pointed it out there, that he, he, he told us where it is. So I want to the Mola also to continue reading that part in the book of Deuteronomy, the next few verses there, please. Verse, uh, verse 4. Because they did not meet you with bread and water on the road when you came out of Egypt, and because they hired against you against you Balaam, the son of Boa, from Pethel of Mesopotamia, okay. to curse you. Thank you. Now, we are going to look at that part in verse 6. Just prepare to read that verse 6 as well. Now, because of an offense that was pointed out. Now, let's look at verse 6. 
You shall not seek their peace nor their prosperity all your days forever. Okay? You now imagine somebody claiming that God even endorses it. That we should never seek their peace. We should never have anything to do with them. But the Lord is saying, our Lord Jesus Christ came as fulfillment, as confirmation of the love of God for you and I. Never for you and I. Never again for us to be ostracized, to be hated, to be cursed. So my dear listener out there, what reason do you have? What reason do I have for me to be feeling condemned? For you not to even come to the Father to say, Father, I've come to you tonight. Tonight is my light night of deliverance. And what reason do you have on the other end for you to say you will never forgive someone? You will never even write off that issue because the person offended you. The, if, if, the, the place we always point to in the Old Testament that I even Father made the confirmation in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, from verse 3 to 6, where he gave the a, 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 he highlighted the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ. All the negative part that people used to point to as the reason for condemnation of others, as the reason of not forgiving others, the Lord made our Lord Jesus Christ to come through that lineage to remove and obliterate every negative thing. Tonight, my dear listener out there, is a final day. A final day of, I mean, end to that issue you have been going through. If the Lord has forgiven you, are you ready to forgive yourself? My dear listener, are you ready to forgive yourself? God loves you, he cares for you. Whatever may be the challenging situation, maybe because of what you did in the past, you ended up having that element, that sickness. Tonight, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pronounce total victory. Total deliverance for you in Jesus' name. Amen. To that individual out there, maybe because of what you did in the past, ignorance of the past, or something you, you didn't even know how it happened, you ended up having your fallopian tube blocked. Tonight, the Lord is opening them. Amen. Tonight, the Lord is opening them Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Every blockage in that individual's fallopian tube, the doctor said that's what has been preventing you from, from conception. Tonight, it is freed in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever name they have called you in the past, prostitute, harlot, or whatever it may be, the Lord has shown us tonight the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now the redemption came. Not only the redemption alone, everybody in the lineage of Rahab, they were saved in the family. Tonight, in the name of our Lord Jesus, every malfunctioning thing, in that man out there that was as a result of the STD, tonight you are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Every area where you say you are paying for the punishment of the past, you are undergoing this because of what you did in the past, the Lord has written them off and he had made the provision through our Lord Jesus Christ. Come in and connect to the grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever debt you are owing and because of the mistake you made, because of the lie you told, because of the sin you, are, you have committed, that remember what we said, the Lord does not look at your past to determine your future. The Lord has forgiven you and is telling you retrace every step, apologize to you, those you need to apologize for and he's going to raise hell from above for you to pay every debt and for you to come out of it in Jesus name. Amen. That death that, that tendency for you to go and commit suicide to kill yourself. The Lord is saying no more. The joy has come to your life. And Lord Jesus has said I've come to even give you life more abundantly. That's the meaning of being saved. Tonight is your night of victory. I congratulate you my dear listener out there. God has forgiven you. Forgive yourself and come and connect to it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You can link us on our email address kingdomlifefamily at yahoo.com or through our producer Taiwo or Moshule Eko 89.7 FM Latif Jakondewe Agdingbi Ikeja a sound engineer on this program has been Sonayon Joseph. Remain blessed. My dear listener out there, as we always say, say it with praise at Praise Arena. You can be part of the monthly program, TGIF, the last Friday of the month, organized by Kingdom Light Christian Center, Praise Arena at Nikon Hotel, VGC, Lekki, Lagos, 6 to 8 p.m. every last Friday of the month. Be part of this mountain moving team, Praise Arena. Say it with praise, and the Lord will be giving you uncommon favor in whatever you are doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Admission is free. For more details about Praise Arena, you can contact us on this number 0909 328 9075. I take that again 0909 328 9075. I'm Jumi Adeto Isho Lagunju. Let others see Christ in you in whatever you do on daily basis. Remain blessed. <laughs> Righteousness. 
peace and joy. Be a part of the kingdom. Come on, come on, everybody. Don't you wanna be a part? Oh, don't you wanna be a part? 